So, we just shot a podcast talking about meat and wine, pairing meat and wine with our friend Chris, Master Psalm. And uh, it was pretty cool because we actually paired three white wines with meat, which is something you know you don't really think of a lot. So we're here at the smoker. We're going to cook up some beef that uh, we've selected from the case. We walked over there and selected some cool stuff from the case. We got some Wagyu beef. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about wine, what we like to drink, what we like to pair it with. So um, kicking it off, Chris, what do you got for us for this first one? Yeah, so we have some champagne to start with, which is not something you would associate with beef, but... It's made in a very rich kind of unctuous style. So we're looking at um, a lot of what we call autolytic character, which is, is all like the brioche toasted nut type thing. But it's actually made all from Chardonnay. Cool. But Chardonnay is a relatively neutral variety that takes well to winemaking or to show the place. So um, the idea here is you have the bubbles, CO2, that's gonna refresh your palate. You have uh, acid that's also gonna refresh your palate, but the wine is weighty enough to stand up to the fatty richness of the Wagyu Zabaton. Nice. Yeah, we did a wine dinner and we did A5, and yeah. it was first. And it kind of blew people's minds that we were steering towards a white. It was a, I think it might have been a sparkling too. Okay. Yeah. But it's, yeah. it's just, it's, it's the marriage. It's beautiful. Yeah, yes. super super rich, super super minerally. Yeah, combat each other. And you want to do together. that with that kind of style, right? Like yeah. you don't want that overly. Like we talked about Cabernet, like going with an overly heavy style with it with another really fatty piece of meat, you know, rich piece of meat, right? Yeah, I mean, I think of like palate impact, right? Mm-hmm. So when you take a bite of Wagyu, it's like, whoa, right? It's yeah. get, like getting punched in the face in the best possible way, best. right? Absolutely. So when you when you <laughs> when you have that happening, you're like you almost need a little reprieve, you know, because yeah. it gets it builds and builds and builds, and if you were to just keep doing that without refreshing your palate, you'd be full in like especially with A5 or yeah. something like that, you'd be full in three bites, yeah. right? Totally. But when you add wine to the mix to like refresh the palate, um, then you can kind of meter it out and you can you can actually eat more than you'd expect and you don't get overwhelmed and it also doesn't lose its specialness because you're like hitting the reset button every time you take some wine so it's not just beef on beef on beef where you're like you're kind of losing that impact it's like beef whoa wine whoa Clean and it's out, reset over. and yeah. then beef again yeah exactly nice. so that's the that's the idea behind sparkling wine with its bubbles with its acid all that kind of good stuff so chef show us kind of what we picked out here uh, mm. from the case. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> Hold it up big, so mm. so the old boomstick over there. Boomstick, you got this. <laughs> <laughs> Love uh, it, dude. All right, Pacific so Rogue, Pacific Rogue Wagyu, mm-hmm. Zabaton, which is one of our favorites, and we're actually gonna slice it and eat it, and it's not gonna be chewy. Nice, dude. Uh, yep. It's probably something we sell most out of the case when we get that Wagyu in that Zabaton. Because look, look it's at so it. beautiful. It looks crazy. Right? I mean. Dude. So where's that from? Where's that from on the animal? Right here. Right there. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like a uh, clam shell shaped muscle, two and a half, three pounders, sits underneath the shoulder blade. So what happens, it takes on all those working muscles structure and protein density and then translates it into that muscle that's kind of just a lazy guy sitting under there doing nothing. Mm-hmm. So you would think that shoulder piece is generally like the long roasties, the brazies, right. those kinds of things, right? There's so many gems in the shoulder. Mm-hmm. Zabs, Terrace Majors, Flatrions. Delmonico's. Delmonico's. There's so many states. Flatrions. Flatrions, Flatrions dude. Shout out to my buddy Tom. Uh, so many uh, <laughs> gems in the shoulder that are not specifically, we're going to grind it, we're going to, you know, yeah. braise it. Right. Old school. Slow right. roast, et cetera. Yeah. Exactly. So these are good ones right here. We're going to pull out. And uh, you grill these nine times out of ten. I'm, I'm going to sear. I'm going to can sear a dude. Yeah. But I also kind of am going in the mindset of what we talked about in the podcast to treating this meat very simply. I'm not going to add a whole lot of nuance mm-hmm. to it. Mm-hmm. Not even going to pepper it. I'm just going to salt. Yeah. Smash a little garlic, a little bit of thyme, wagyu tallow, tallow. wale. Wale action. Wale. Butter, butter, butter. I always forget that. My, my favorite, right? That's, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's my go-to. Yeah. Right? When At I think my of house, cooking for yes, you. That's what I do. Mr. Poilet over there. That's how I do it too. That's how I do chicken, skin on. Oh yeah. My wife calls it tangifying it. Yeah, we do the poilet. Tangilis. Yeah. 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 You should chill. We got we gotta go over poilet when we're doing this. Oh yeah. It's it's it's, it's cool. And and I love how he salts, man. Like I I always say it, man, like you salts 
like you just like you always I was bro. like I was salting <laughs> as a young person going like this. Yeah, no, yeah, dude. Chef walked by. He's like, like the rain. It what? makes a difference. <laughs> oh, good. Makes a difference. <laughs> and Sorry. not an insignificant amount. This is also key, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, right? especially on a nice. It's like a what yeah. inch. Thick. Inch and a bit, probably yeah, thick. thick. So thick. I'm gonna season this baby up. Plus, it's thick with two C's. We like it salty. <laughs> <laughs> Double C's. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, I want your opinion on this since I've got you here and we're talking about salt. Yep. So reading a lot about pre-salting lately, Ooh. with like like even a day beforehand. What's your okay. opinion on that? So what the, what are we cooking? Number one question. Uh, what size of cut are we gonna cook? So the first time I did this was actually with a chicken. So I take a whole chicken, I would salt it liberally and okay. put it on a rack over a sheet tray mm-hmm. in the fridge, not covered. Mm-hmm. So we're getting seasoning, but also drying out of the skin, so that when I roast it, it gets extra crispy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that's how I started. But what I've been reading lately and experimenting lately with is doing cuts like this, salted mm-hmm. the day before. Not as not as much as you did, a little bit less. Yep. But then letting it dry out in the fridge and then doing one last salt before I cook it. So it's almost in the idea of dry brining, right? Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. almost exactly like that. Like brine yeah. is is wet. It's water, mm-hmm. sugar, salt, mm-hmm. whatever seasonings you think you're gonna put in there, whatever submerged, depending on the size of the muscle, you got twenty. Eight hour, twenty four hour. It sounds nice. Yeah, it yeah. smells so good. That smells like loggy delicious. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, short answer is, how long is it going to sit? Yeah. Because you're, what you're doing is you're pulling out the moisture out of the muscle structure, mm-hmm. right? Which is going to add to the pellicles. You're picking up smoke, right? You're going to have that natural tackiness at the end of the day when you pull it out. Um, and also, like a piece like this, I, I let it be in a little salty crust for um, anywhere from you know eight hours to almost 24 overnight in the fridge okay. if you want. But you have to kind of do that trial by error, right? Right. You can overdo it. You can, and then yeah. what's happening is you're partially curing that piece of meat, oh, right? Okay. So the outer portion is going to start to get a little leathery, maybe yeah. a little bit more of the uh, chewiness versus. What we're going for here is a nice solid crisp yeah, right, right, right. right. So okay. it's kind of trial by fire. Yeah. yeah. Right. And why do you press down on the meat like that? You, I always just, see you guys doing that. I don't press too hard. Okay. I'm just, I'm like, I'm just, I'm just giving it a little warm and burning. Oh, you know, you're going to get touched a lot, me in the middle, you know? <laughs> <laughs> with time like this. I'm okay with that. <laughs> see? See? Yeah, hey, we're all see? friends. <laughs> I don't know but why yeah. you guys are so weird about it. Yeah, you're trying to get like even contact. I just, so yeah, okay. I'm just okay. looking for that rad, crusty first, oh. first sear. Right? Wow, look at that. Oh, that's amazing. I gotta take photos of this. Okay, a lot of that has to do with the amount of wagyu fat that I just put in there. Yeah. Beef tallow. You give it that initial crispy, crunchy sear. Not necessarily pan frying. Where pan frying would be like, you know, a quarter to halfway up on the piece of meat. But I. I do generally get a little bit liberal with my initial fat in the pan, especially if we're using wagyu tallow. We're using butter, it's just, you have that separation, there's a bunch of protein structures that are gonna start to stick to the pan, yeah, where true. this is just pure, luscious liquid gold. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Also, as this beef cooks, being that it's wagyu, it's also gonna start to release its own fatty juices coming out. Right? Yes. So we're gonna turn this down to low. Slow and low, slow and low this baby. So get that initial sear, yeah. flip, look at and that. slow and low. Look at that. Mm. Dude, that's a nice crust, man. Mm. Crusty, crunchy. Dude. Mm. I, 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 it's in my notes. I looked it up last night how to do it on, on the YouTube. Yeah, no. you chat GTT. <laughs> yeah. So Tyler, if this wasn't such a thick cut, would you yep. want to do the slow and low or do you want to do more hot and fast? Hot and fast. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So you got, you got your skirt, you got your flank, you got your yeah. dab, kulat, New York, ribeye, you know, you kind of like as that goes, mm-hmm. that also as that goes, you would not heavily salt your skirt steak overnight, mm-hmm. but you could salt sure. it for a couple of hours. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Or put it different, you know, whatever, whatever region of the world we're cooking that day, if it's Latin influence, the Asian, whatever. Right. Right. So you add those spices as you go. Hmm. I like that you're using the uh, 
My tweeds? The big tweeds. My, my you know? gastro tongs? Yeah, man. I, put, I busted it out for Tan. I, I, yeah, dude. He's <laughs> like, oh, like, freaking like, wine. Oh, shit. Tan, he's coming. I gotta look correct. Yeah. I love tweeds of food. <laughs> tweeds so nice. Man, this, this would go really good. This would go really well, huh? Yeah. This, and what about that, the second wine that you, that you, uh, yeah, that's a million. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, second wine we've got is uh, from Rioja. It's uh, white Rioja, which is kind of unusual. It's not the bulk of what's made there. It's normally red wines made from Tempranillo. This is made from Diura, but made in a similar kind of oxidative way, meaning long time in barrel, um, and gets all these really rich, nutty, savory, chicken skinny type things going on. Um, and the weight of this wine due to the aging process really is what is going to make it stand up to this. It's kind of like what we talked about with the autolysis in the last wine. Yeah. But even more oxidative character, um, but with plenty of acid to cut through the fat. So okay. um, I think today that was my favorite wine of lineup. It was my favorite yeah. Uh, yeah. thing that you said that really? stuck in my brain of the fatty, schmaltzy, chicken fatty oh, okay. of this. Uh, both of them actually kind yeah, of yeah. pops out a little bit in the, I mean, every nose is different, right? Every yeah. palate is different. You pick up on so many different things. I think that's one of the most fun things about tasting wines in a group, two, three, four to 10 people and being like, what do you taste, what do you taste? And like yeah. maybe yeah. getting down your thoughts before you go over what you taste, because like what you said, it's you, those little things you say, like, oh, now it's stuck in there. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. This, take, this smells so unique. Mm. You know, like, 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 not like the other, you know, the Are other you ready for my favorite wine. sound? Oh, sorry. Oh, hey. oh, oh, hey. Hey, hey what's that? Get it. Ooh. It's okay. That's okay. See, okay, so just that very light thyme, mm -hmm. very light garlic approach to not bend what we're doing with the wine, right? Light garlic being like six cloves, yeah. by the way. Hey. <laughs> I know. Yeah, right. This guy, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I do? <laughs> That's why chef food tastes so good. That's right. That's what I do. Oh, yeah. And then we're going to take that baby. Put it right there. So so this is... Are you putting that on top or are you poiling it? Or I'm going to put this on top okay. first. Right? And why are you doing that? Why are you putting the garlic on top? Because then I'm going to baste... Baste over the garlic? The hot brownie bubbly butter to where yeah. all the essential oils uh -huh. are just... Brushing the meat. Bro. I feel like Chef Ramsey would be painting, so proud of you right now. Dude. Painting the meat with just a little of flavor. Okay. And how are we going to eat our dabs today? I'm down with rare to whatever, man. How do you guys like it? Whatever. How do you think it would pair with, uh, Your choice. with the wine? Your choice. I mean, for me, fattier cuts, I kind of like them medium rare. Right. Especially you want a little right? plus because yep. you want that fat actually like melty in your mouth. Melty in your mouth. Not. Yeah. not like chewing on cold fat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's yeah. the boomstick like? Yeah. Medium? Let's go, let's Good. go. Let's Me go, oh, yeah, like let's it. go 130. Let's go 130. Good. So you gotta account for Chef Carry now. Uh, what's that? Chef Carry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chef Carry over. Carry over. <laughs> one, 130. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. They must teach that at the CIA. They See, did, I only yeah, went they to did. the Cordon Bleu. I didn't, oh, make, you, I didn't make it to... Did you go to Cordon Bleu? I was actually... I say Cordon Bleu, but it was actually before Cordon Bleu uh, purchased Western Culinary Institute in Portland. But okay. It was like okay. towards the tail end of my tenure there. So, okay. Uh, Cordon Bleu. Nice, dude. Right. Oh, baby. This, oh. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to brush this guy off because the way that I like to watch my steaks because I start to see all these translucent juices come to the top of the meat, right? Mm. There it is. <laughs> That's mm. it. That it's is getting there. Be, and you're doing the little the, the, the testing. Too, I know. So. I was, for me, I'm not really doing the test as much, yeah? especially okay. on a zap because it has that um, muscle structure to where it tightens up a little bit. Oh, okay. So it can be a little bit deceiving as ah, far as like okay, okay. like this, 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 this. Yeah. You know that test? Yeah. Yeah, like I don't know. I don't know right? what, but when you squeeze it, that's so like well, it well done. And then the, this is the fat of your thumb here, not fat, but the muscly part of your yeah. thumb. That's like rare. And yeah. then the middle of your palm would be well. And then a gradient between that. So that's kind yeah. of like a good little cheat code if you're unsure, because you can't see, right? Yeah. So you, you can do it that way. You could use like very early 2000s the cake tester. 
Okay. Oh, yeah. What's that? Oh, you have one? No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wow. Brad Keenel of Cake Duster, you poke it in. You either put it on your, your wrist, your palm of your hand, or no, back the, in the day, it was the, at the bottom of the lip. Yeah, the cool kids put at the bottom so, of the lip. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's see. If I had my <laughs> poker out here, what you would do is you'd stab right into the middle of the meat with this yeah. little needle, as it is, yep. and pull it out, and then just tap it on your lip. So, that's the most sensitive, you know, tender piece, right, on your lip. So, so what are you looking for? You're looking for temperature, which is like, if you think about your lip being 98 whatever degrees or yeah. whatever, if it's yeah. burns the shit, you, you fucking totally yeah. overcooked it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, you, it's done. You smoked it. If it's, it's cold, not in yeah. a good way. That's, it's, it's, a huge, yeah. it's a huge old school, like, cote de bouffe, right? Those yeah. Yeah. big, cote big, whole bouffe. roasty ribeyes that uh, you get in the fancy, fancy French It's, it's French like an restaurant. analog uh, thermometer, basically. Yeah. You know, yeah. it adds a little mystique and skill and whatnot. Okay, so we're gonna pull these Nothing out. Wrong, just temping I just use the temp yeah, yeah, thermometer. Totally. Yeah, just, yeah, just use the thermometer. That's cool. You know, there's nothing wrong you know. with any of that stuff. Everybody's like, like, you, in a kitchen, your 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 studiousness comes out as as long as you've been cooking, right? Like, like I don't. Nobody uses it. If you're the man on the meat station, you just know it, right? right. You see it. You yeah. know what's going on. The you're telepathic. You, yeah. You just see just through. Understand. Right? You've done yeah. it so many times. No. Where the newbies are coming in with their, yeah, you know, like, uh, put it up here, put it down here, put it up here, put it up here. Yeah. Like, you just know. You're like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Good. Medium. Bam. Resting. Yeah. That's good. Get in the salad, slice it. Yeah. And when you hit that groove, when you get that skill set and you hit that groove, yeah. and you've got oh, like amazing. a whole bat, like a whole grill, it's like this size it's of this amazing. table, yeah. and you're just like boom, 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 yeah, finishing on the salamander blood. That's crazy. Here. It's such it, a cool it's, feeling. It's like, yeah. that's, it's like the DJ it of is. meats, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're just moving on the hot spots and sh but I think a lot of people don't know, know that, right? Like when you go to a nice steakhouse, they're probably cooking your meat. They probably yeah. did they have they pre cooked it a little bit or, mm. or what? So they'll, no, they'll cook it, then they'll let it rest, and then they'll hit it on the salamander, the hot salamander, to reheat it basically right. to get it back up to like edible so temperature. Right? Back in the day, Union. That's called sandbagging. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, and what, like, what, what, what's the dude, process? Yeah. Capitol Grill did 900 covers the other day for Mother's Day. Wow. Tell me they wow. did steak salamander. Mm. No way. Probably not. I bet yeah. you they had mid rares, mediums. They had to get ahead of that. Just get ahead. Oh, it's for sure. Painful. Yeah. Nine hundred. Um, I mean, that's insane. When I worked at Union, oh, God, dude. first moved to town, and the meat station at Union was um, probably one of the hardest stations I've ever worked mm -hmm. in my life of cooking. You install Union? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think at one point I counted there was like twenty four proteins on my station. We're talking <laughs> scallops, foie, squab. Strip, grilling flock, octopus searing. Okay. And I had this one station, and I got—I was the only one cook that got my own ticket, so I got the dupes. And Ethan's like, "All right, we're going on this, we're going on this." And then sandbagging, shit, dude, I'm searing. Oh, he tuna. We're talking like Honolulu fish, like thirty dollar a pound, oh. A plus. Oh, ah, he, he fucked that up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you yeah. can't fuck that up. Chefy angry. <laughs> so, so getting that, you have how many things going at one time and then you're resting and you got to make sure all your resting piles are all exactly how you left them you know exactly like that was first second third fourth fifth right yeah like when you're throwing pans in the oven you open up like shit which one yeah. did i put in there first oh yeah Duh! yeah have a <laughs> just <laughs> i've seen cooks cry oh, oh dude. yeah go down so overwhelming punch the floor cry because yeah. it is so stressful, it is stressful and you just messed up an entire service and it's yeah. not just your station yeah. No, you mess Especially up. Especially if you're at a meat station. Yeah. yeah. Nobody's Bro. helping you. No. Yeah. You're screwed. That's like that's like the uh, the fish station in a really fancy French restaurant. And it's hot. You are in charge yeah, of right? your starch, your yeah. sauce, your fish, your sure, protein. Your sauce. Yeah. All of that is Ooh. you. Where meat guy all has to do is meats. Entremet's doing all the sets for meat guy. Yeah. Fish station, French restaurant. <laughs> You are also the dude. one of my most favorite stations I've ever worked in my life. I, I yeah. love sauteing. It's my favorite thing to yeah. do in a, in a restaurant. How period. much butter do you go through on a fish station in a French French restaurant? A lot. A lot. Yeah. Like like pounds. Like well, I, pounds. I would I would dice three quarts yeah. of butter and have them on my station, you know, for, for quality and do it. And I had yeah. a, bunk, a dump bucket like it's <laughs> nuts, dude. <laughs> and that's hot as fuck. Like, yeah. 
scorch you. Do you splash any of that? You splatter uh, on your foot or your leg or your hands or your arms? Like, is it different? It's more of like a quick, intense burn the shit out of your heat, whereas the grill is just like intense heat, constant, the whole time. The right? whole time. Uh, I remember showing up, I was uh, working at this place for my internship in Colorado, and I showed up hungover. Oh. Mm -mm. Ooh. And Chef was like, hey, uh, Tanji, what's, what's going on? And I'm like, oh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> and he's like, mm. and he's like, you go out last night? I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah For man. one, you know, two, maybe, maybe three. <laughs> and he was like, no, nope, that's it. You're working grill. And oh. I wasn't supposed to wear grill that night, but he, because I was hungover, he put me on there. And so mm. I was just Ouch. like, oh, just suffering for the first hour and a half and then I felt great because I sweat it all out and it was awesome <laughs> so he's actually doing me a favor he's doing you a solid yeah, yeah, yeah. who spilled the beers around here yeah oh, yeah. oh yeah. Yeah. he's sweating oh. Yeah. Sweating beer. Oh, that's like terrible. Beer and whiskey. And, yeah. yeah other Awfulness. Things. Yeah. That's good, though. Hangover. Yeah, he was doing you a solid, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, no man. good. No. no Hangover good. at Build restaurants is the worst. Because you're like serving that wine or that beer, and you're just like, oh, God. My, God. my, uh, <laughs> my good friend Justin was teaching him at a pasta station at Pato, yeah. which was nasty. One of the hardest stations I've ever worked in. It was hard. Yeah. And you're burning yourself constantly. Mm -hmm. Through a week of work, you have splatters just, yeah. you look like you have a disease, honestly. It's, uh, like, it's awful. Oh, no, no, that's why so, chef coats have sleeves, yeah, dude. Yeah, dude, but you can't, you can't. You gotta roll them up and show off the tattoos, like though, ninja, bro. <laughs> right? Like, you know, Bruce Lee takes his off, dude, when he's true, in the heat, true. right? Yeah. All right, okay. So that's Justin fair. passes just out on cool the train. He from the cloth. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Into the dragon. <laughs> Justin falls asleep on the train going home because he lived out in Beaverton. We were downtown Portland to the point where somebody thought he was drunk or something, so they called the cops. And the cops came up, the door opened, they're like kicking him awake. He's like, ah. Oh. And they're like, what's with all these birds? They're like drug addicts. He's like, no, I'm a cook. He's like, well, you must not be very good. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude. He's like, he was like pissed. So the oh. cop was like calling him out on his right. oh, skill. Oh, man. Come on. All right, Zabbies. All right, so All we've right. rested these Zabbies now. I see they're rested. Dude. So you're going to... Ooh, let's... Mm. Oh, yeah. That mm. is a nice... I bet that's about 128, 130. You think right in the middle there? I don't know. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. This just... just but it, it looks just, so good. It just bangs. All right, so let's try to try the first two. Then we'll talk about the last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because that's going to go really well. Oh, my... God, dude, I cooked this. I mean, I'm not, like uh, you said earlier, I'm not tooting my own Yeah, man. <laughs> you must have done this before. Once or twice. Uh, once or twice. So you finished with a little salt on wet on American yeah, I'm just, here? Yeah, I did just a little bit of uh, salt on the meat. And this is full blood Zabuton, full blood Wagyu Zabuton. Yeah. Traceable lineage, right? Yep. 100%. God, it looks so good. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Zabuton, you got it, you're cutting that against the grain. Mm -hmm. it's, there's some tricky pieces in there. Yeah. I can see where people mess kind of up. Screwed right? up. Bro. Bro, I need this piece right oh, here. Man. Dude. What are you drinking? The champagne? Oh. I'm sorry with the champagne. Oh so, God. a couple things I want you to think about when you mm -hmm. taste them together is weight. First and foremost, weight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does the, the Zab overpower the champagne or vice versa? Or do they have a relative equal weight? I think they sat together in class and exchanged notes for the test. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable, that's, the, that's the even weight, right? Yeah, it's very even. So you think of champagne being like elevated and ephemeral and lifted, but this style has such a dense core to it that it actually stands up to the weight of this meat. And it I, doesn't dude, get- Dude, honestly, like, I mean, I'm gonna real. try some more but yeah. I'm still tasting a little bit more of the champagne than I am the mm. beef itself after, right? Because mm. you get some of that lingering mm -hmm. goodiness, right? Mm. Who needs more salt? That's Do I need salt. more salt? Man. Mm-hmm. Dude, that is so good. It's so amazing. And you know what's crazy, too, is that we sell that piece of meat in the meat case for, what, like 17 bucks, probably? Yeah. 17, under that's 20 not, bucks, like one of, those, one of those chunks of under wow. 20 bucks. That's not crazy. I mean, that's like, a, that's an incredible experience. For if you go to a steakhouse, that would be like, that'd be 70, 70 80, eight, ex yeah. Yeah. Six, Drop minimum, this yeah. right here is like $55. At least. Yeah. Oh, at right? least. With, mm. oh, with some dots reach. of Sorry, balsamic drizzle. Mm -hmm. you know? oh, yeah. 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 No, thanks. 
like if I ask for just salt, can you take off 20 bucks? Mm. Yeah, keep your pepper <laughs> sucker. <laughs> no. That's crazy. That was just salt. That's no pepper, that's just salt. Yeah. That's how I like to roll, dude. I really do. And it's like, like you said, like we're going to taste different wines, we're going to do different things to the meat. Mm-hmm. We're going to choose different selections of the meat. We're going to choose, you know, fattiness or whatever we're going to do. We're going to base it around the wine, right? So we're trying to balance the acidity to fattiness, or if we are going to give it that home run shot, mm. we're going to nail how much spice and everything else that needs to yeah. be on that steak to marry with the beautiful nuances like coming out of this guy. There's yeah. so many things going on there to where. Yes. Well, what's cool about this, this is, and this is where you can really dial in those nuances is with your additions for the exactly vibe. so like resinous herbs like rosemary mm-hmm. thyme things like that can work really well with something that is rich and savory and unctuous like this um, mm-hmm. next one the white rioja or if you wanted something a little more delicate say um you wanted to do like maybe a little bit less oxidative style of champagne that was a little bit more lifted you could do something like uh, tarragon or sure. chervil or something that's not quite or as Bernays. like or yeah it's something not not quite as like um, as resinous as powerful as thyme or rosemary or something like mm. that okay. okay so there's ways to di- use the same base but dial in the nuances oh, around man. it you know yeah man, this so one funny. yeah this this one is like so different from like when you say unctuous I'm like I'm smelling. I'm like trying to figure out what those what those smells are, and it, yeah, I'm just yeah. like, you just you say mushrooms. Mm-hmm. That's oh, absolutely crazy. Yeah, roasted, like, I'm like, like what am I smelling? Yeah. Like I didn't really get it until you said that. I love that you say unctuous because it's one of my favorite mm. descriptors. Because to me, it's like it even gives you like when I really drink a big wine, mm-hmm. a, a heavy hitter, I call it chewy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right, because yeah. it's almost yeah. like you're picking up so many different things, like lather and toastiness, and, and a little maybe some char in there, or smoke, or something yeah. like that. And like to the point where you're not just going and trying to aerate it. You're like, oh my god, like it's so luscious. Yeah. Right. And there are pieces of meat out there too. Like you, you like say our beef ribs, right? Have you ever oh, had yeah. the beef rib on Friday night yeah. here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. God, yeah. It's it's just nuts. That'll take you down. It will. <laughs> I would argue that because of this, the the fat to protein ratio okay. is so much greater, right? In in a cut like this, I mean, you saw it raw, and you're seeing it now, right? Yeah. yeah. That actually, these wines are more appropriate yeah. than Cabernet would be, honestly. I think Cabernet is going to work better. Thousand percent agree. When you have that tannin match uh, match with a higher protein ratio in the steak, but when you have all this fat, you need something that's refreshing, right? Yeah. Um, sure. And so I think that these wines actually work better than mm. the Cabernet. These are so refreshing. Mm. Um, this one is, this, this middle one right here. Dude. Wow. I love the champagne, but I, I think it's, so far as the winner, it's, I'm yeah. looking forward to the next one. Yeah, yeah, I am too. I am too. What's this rad one, hey. is that when you listen to the podcast that we just shot with Mr. Tanji here, um, he talks about wow. pairing, you know, we ask questions of pairing wines and meats and how and what and scooby dooby doo and the long answer, the short answer was there's no rules, really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? There's, it's experimentation, and it's like, first off, start with what you like, right? If, you, if you're a ribeye dude, then fuck a pansy or a ribeye and get yourself a nice bottle of red wine or whatever yep. you're going to do. Totally. Start. Next week, come into the shop, get a different steak, mm-hmm. maybe leaner, maybe totally, a completely different dynamic than a ribeye, yeah. and go to the store soon to be maybe a store where in the neighborhood you could buy a nice bottle of wine and talk to a master or something. Yeah, I'm not certain about that quite yet. Yeah, maybe, um, but maybe, maybe, maybe down maybe. the road that we'll might see. happen. That, and yeah. You might could come here, yes. pick yourself out a nice piece of steak and go out and be like, there you go. Tanch, dude, it's got this steak. What should I drink with it? I'm like, oh, what do you like? Because that's my first question, right? I was going to bring that up when we were talking about wines. It's like, that's the first question. People come in like, I say, there's three questions. I say, how many people... Mm-hmm. So you get your size right, mm-hmm. fatty or leaner, mm-hmm. and then how are we gonna cook it? Mm-hmm. Right? Are we grilling? Yeah. Are we searing? Are we roasting? Are we like right? So, yeah. I mean, those basic questions. I guess you could break those down to wine too, because you can simplify it that much, right? Like, mm-hmm. what do you like? Region, yeah. style, anything like that. It's pretty. Those are pretty easy answers. Hundred percent. 
And then there's so many different variables into that one genre of answer, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Same with me, exact same me. Yeah, yeah. All meat's not the same, and not all wine's the same, right? I love it. Damn. There you have all it. All right, let's try this last That's one. So good. Mm. So what style is this? So last wine is 2016 Marcel Dice. Um, Grasberg, which is a site right above a Grand Cru uh, vineyard in Assad. It's a co-fermentation of uh, Pinot Gris, Riesling, and Gewürztraminer. Grown together, fermented together, aged together. Has a little bit of residual sugar to add a little bit of mid-palate weight, but it, I wouldn't call this a sweet wine by any stretch. There's, um, It's very subtle. I think it's good with this, especially with the crusty edges. Um, oh, okay. But... For me, I'd want like maybe a little bit of rubber spice Black or something. Pepper. Yeah. Okay. Some little, yeah. some little kick it up notchy. Yeah. So okay. this is designed more for you know when you're gonna add yeah. other things other than just the meat. I think here let's just let's just rub a little more garlic on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it still is delish, but I think the 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 wine is a little bit heavier than the meat. And so it overpowers the meat just a little bit. But if you add that yeah. spice to tame a little bit of residual sugar, etc., it'd be great. To me, the the, the home run pairing. Right there. That's the guy. I mean, these are both really good. Yeah, yeah this is like way. next it's, level. It's just so yeah, it's so, so unique. I, I don't know because it's like refreshing, but also I don't want to say bold, but it's like it like stands mm -hmm. up to it, you know. Um, I still feel it, like that's not far off though. Well, no, it's, it's not. I mean. Hmm. It's not. It's right. not a struggle by any stretch. It's still like oh, because yeah. there's a little bit. I'm not mad right less, now. Less uh, <laughs> solidity, salinity, salinity. Yeah, saltiness mm -hmm. to this one, or a little more sugar. Yeah, or that salty punch from the meat because I'm a salter. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, the sweet salty thing works well. Yeah, so good for sure. For I, sure. I, I think my wife would would really enjoy this one. Mm. This she last one here, right here. Yeah, I think she would really enjoy that. It's refreshing. Has a little bit of sweetness to it. She doesn't like it too dry. But man, it would just go go well with their cooking too. Mm. And you could pour any of these wines for anybody, really, unless they were like a white wine hater, right? If they were like, okay, I like white wine, right? And you sit them down with this and, then, and one of these, it, it'd be it'd blow their mind because yeah. they would just be like, it'd be totally unexpected, but really work and mm -hmm. show you that it's not just red. Red's great. Get me wrong, red can really work, but oftentimes I would say that a lot of red wines overpower the steaks themselves. So you need to be really careful. I, dude, I'm pumped that we had three white wines. This today is cool. With, with yeah, this luscious. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah. It looks like uh, we're calling in an expediter tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. I mean, I mean, the purpose was to kind of show something different. You know, like 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 we always say, what we do, we try to showcase the whole cow, right? Not just the tenderloins, the ribeyes, and the fillets, or, or sorry, the the New Yorks. Uh, we try to showcase everything, all the unique cuts. And with this, is it's it's you know, instead of just showing the cabernets and the merlots that go well with red meat, like let's try something different. Let's try something yeah. a little bit unique. You can reach outside the box, and you said you know, try something new and experience something new, and not just go back to the same wines that you drink every single night. Yeah, I'm gonna give you. So me to take home mm -hmm. and a different rub. Okay. I'm gonna give you the gogi. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because I want you to start, maybe even pork. Maybe we'll do a pork cobra. Pork. Okay. Copa oh, or yeah. something. God, I'm With so this. Good. Man. Bruh. Yeah. That would have been so good. <laughs> that would have been so good. It's really good. Yeah. 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 And then you can you can take all the credit when Lauren says, Oh, Chris is so delicious. <laughs> and really you're like, well Tyler. <laughs> 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 right. Uh, that was awesome, guys. Yeah. So yeah, dude. Thanks Thank for coming. Thank you so that was much, great, man. We really lot appreciate of fun you coming on, mm, man. Like, this is cool. This is cool. Lots of so much great information that we're gonna have to, you know, talk Expect about. You have maybe forward. some more tattoos next time. You yeah, I know. I need to work on it. Jeez, bro, kick it up. I know. I'm slacking. This guy. Huh? Dude, yeah, he's, he's got it. You know, I just got this. My one arm makes me look good when I do push ups. You know, <laughs> you're one, you're doing one arm, you're like, one hand, dude. yeah, right? But one hand, it works, works right. that one arm. He's got, he's got a Charlie arm on the left side. Oh, yeah, dude, yeah, Charlie's ripped, Charlie's man. so skinny, man. I know, I know, because I've never seen him eat. Like, I literally, like, really? like we had a meeting at Supreme, now, so. dude. Like, and we ate pizza, like, when we first opened. That's yeah. I think that's the only time I've literally seen him eat. Huh. It's insane, dude. I don't see him eat anything, never. 
just that, lives on the joy of life. He's such a joyful is, character. That, that should be a t-shirt. Charlie living joy, on the joy, joy of, of life. life. Joy of life. Joy of life. happened. He put that on his paycheck or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, should we sign it off? Hey. Feel good. Hey, cheers, Shalutes. guys. Thanks. Salute. Thanks. Appreciate you. That was you. great. That yeah. Was mm. Cheers to Charlie. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Shekels. <laughs> Save a little piece of that for the boomstick. It'll oh, be, my gosh. You'll be mad. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you right. go.